Do you want to create better outfits, but you don't want to go shopping? Well, today I'm sharing three huge keys to creating better outfits from the clothes in your closet. I think that's where most of us get stuck is we buy great things, we go shopping, we buy an outfit, we think, oh yes, that will go with this, this, and this also. So I'm covered, I'm good. We get home, we wear the outfit, then we go to mix it and match it and create new outfits because that's what a girl wants to do, right? And something falls apart, it just falls apart. It's happened to me, in fact, it still happens to me. I do not always get it right when I'm creating my outfits, even the ones I'm sure that I show you there are times when I look back and I go oh that wasn't quite right and today is gonna shed some light on why that often happens this is a concept I've not talked about before really never talked about this concept before and the, the third one that is so hang with me because it's a tough one to tackle <laughs> And I'm hoping that I can get through this quickly and concisely. I'm really hoping that I can articulate this to you because it is such a key. I would kind of equate it to, no pun intended, advanced math. <laughs> and I hate advanced math. I didn't take any advanced math. And so that's why this is going to be such a challenge because I think it is so important though for us to go to this next step when it comes to creating great outfits. Okay, the first key though is one that is going to sound like I'm being redundant, but hang with me because I'm not. I have more to say about this. The first key is you do have to have in your closet certain things. You've got to have the right essentials, the right basics. So I'm going to cover this one more time and really kind of from a different angle. So listen carefully to this. Not only do you need some t-shirts, some tanks, some turtlenecks, whatever, those base layers, some great jeans, some great pants, whatever. Not only do you need those, but you need them in strategic colors or neutrals. Here's what I think. You need them in the same colors, or at least close to the same colors, the same kind of color as your outer pieces. This time of year, when we are layering on things, whether you're wearing a sweater and then layering on a coat, or you're wearing a t-shirt and then you're layering on a blazer or a jacket or of some sort or a cardigan, you want those base layers to work with those outerwear pieces. And that, ladies, is where so many of us, including me, we get stuck, we get frustrated because we've got these great base layers. We love them, we love those colors, we love those pieces. We go to wear them with a blazer, we go to wear them with a cardigan or even our outerwear coat and suddenly it's not working. So I, that's another reason why I do think it is so important to narrow down your color palette to just a few colors and a few neutrals for every season. So throughout the year, you can wear all the colors if you want to, but in each season, I suggest that we really narrow it down to three or four neutrals, three or four colors, and this is why, so that we can stretch those colors into multiple outfits because we have the base layers and we have the outer layers that work together. And when I say work together, I, I mean like they match almost. They don't have to like match, like be from the same store, the same brand, you know, the same little outfit, you know, thing, but they need to be in kind of the close to the same color. Uh, some of them and then we also need some that like work together nicely like maybe a dusty pink works nicely with a brown or maybe I don't know like a nice lavender works nicely with a gray so our colors need to work nicely with our neutrals but we need to have some neutral t-shirts tanks sweaters pullovers you know turtlenecks that work with those outer pieces so that we can do what I'm going to be showing you just a minute the next key, and I'm not going to go completely over this, but is we have got to know how to work with contrast and intensity. So I'm going to run through this really quickly, and then I'm going to refer you to another video that I did. <laughs> I'm showing it over here. Got linked it up there uh, about, about a year or two ago now about how to work with contrast and intensity in your outfits, how it is the number one game changer when it comes to creating great outfits. I believe it. I really do. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> And I think so many of you do too, because when you discover this tool and you see how it works, it's like a major game changer, isn't it? So here's how it works. First of all, 
intensity. When we're talking intensity, we're not talking about color. We're talking about boldness. So if something is bold and it's deep and it's, you know, it's pigmented, or if it is mild, if it's soft, it's, it's maybe it's a little lighter, it, it carries less weight. That's what we mean by intensity. The first thing you want to do is look at the intensity in the coloring in your eyes, your hair, and your skin. So you could be, you could have black skin, but if your, your black skin is really soft, you know, it's like that mellow brown color, and then you have dark brown eyes and you have black hair, then you've got some high contrast and intensity going on. If you are like me and you have pale skin and you have light green or light blue or light gray eyes, and then you have light gray or silvery hair, then you have low contrast and intense because all three of those have low intensity. So I have low contrast between the threes. So remember, we're not talking about do you have low intensity or do you have high intensity or do you have medium intensity? We're talking about do you have low contrast, contrast between those three things, right? So think on that. <laughs> think on that. I think that's where a lot of ladies get stuck is you're thinking how much intensity you have instead of how much contrast and in intensity you have. So I have low contrast intensity. So I really like to then keep my outfits also low contrast and in intensity. I can wear high intensity outfits. I can wear red and black and dark brown. I can wear high intensity, but I want there to be little contrast between those things. On the other hand, if you are that person I talked about a while ago, you have that pale, that lighter, uh, honey tone black skin, and you have dark brown eyes, and you have black hair, you have high contrast and intensity, you're going to look great when you wear maybe a soft pink sweater and dark black pants, you know, or a really a beautiful bright blue jacket and white or ivory pants. That high contrast and intensity is going to look stunning on you. So that is really the next key is to really nail this thing down to where you know if it's best for you to create outfits with high contrast and intensity, medium contrast and in intensity, or low contrast and in intensity. You want to reflect your personal contrast and in intensity in your outfits. If you need more on that, I can link you to, like I said, that other video, and I can link you probably to a blog post or two too, and that may help that out because that makes all the difference in the world. Now in today, I'm gonna to be showing you some outfits. I've already shown you a few here, but I'm showing you some more outfits in all of them. I am only wearing like a soft camel, an oatmeal beige and gray. Those are three of my neutrals for this fall and winter. I love those neutrals. I'm doing all of this in those three neutrals just so that you can see the importance of having those base layers that I talked about in key number one in the colors that you've chosen for your wardrobe. Because when you have all of those base layers in those colors that you've chosen for your color palette, then you can work some magic. You can work some magic with the clothes in your closet. You do not have to go shopping every other week. You can make some great outfits from what you have. So just kind of translate this to the colors or the neutrals that are in your wardrobe. I pulled these from my closet. I want you to pull things from your closet to create some great outfits, but I wanted to keep it narrow so we're not just going all over the place so that you can see that I pulled these from my closet and how well they work together, okay? My third key and the big one that I've never talked about before is working the lines. We have got to know how to work those horizontal lines in our outfits. You know, I have a lot of viewers, a lot of readers, not a lot, a handful of viewers and readers who will say to me periodically in the comments, oh, I hate those cropped link or ankle, ankle link pants. They're just too short, I don't like them, they chop you off. Well, you know, you're partly right there, but not completely because that's not the only line we have to be concerned about. And there are ways to adapt to those ankle length pants because ladies, the truth is ankle length pants aren't going anywhere, I don't think. I think we're gonna have ankle length pants 
till the Lord comes back. <laughs> I just kind of think we are because ankle length pants are very convenient. They are easy to pair shoes with, at least especially in the spring and summer and all that. They are really stylish. They look, they actually are very flattering to your ankles, your feet, and they can help you create great outfits. Now, this is not about ankle length pants. We're also gonna be seeing some full length pants too, but what I want you to know is it's not just the bottom line of where your pants, the hemline that we've got to worry about. There are other lines in our outfits. The lines we're gonna be talking about are your neckline, your waistline, your coat or jacket or cardigan line where it ends, and then the hem of your pants, where your pants end. So those are four different lines, and really there's all sorts of other lines going on in our outfits, right? If you're wearing a striped top and you've got a stripe going across your bosom, then you've got a line right there. If you have you know, stripes going across your waist, then you've got lines there. If you have some jeans, like I do here, with some whiskering right there at the crotch and across the, you know, the front of your torso, then you've got some lines there too. And most all jeans have them these days. If you have some distressing across the knees of your jeans, then you have lines there. So you get it. And actually, even your sleeves also create lines when you're holding your arms down to your side. Those sleeves could be you know, really long or they could roll up and that's one of the reasons why we use that little style hack of rolling our sleeves up. It's not just to get your sleeves out of your way, it's because that actually does sometimes change the whole look of the outfit when you just raise that line. So we've got to get a little bit of mastery at work in these horizontal lines. So let's, let's see if I can tackle this. All right, the first thing we want to do is think about proportions. You'll need to know your proportions, like where, how are you? Or do you have a short torso and long legs? Do you have a longer torso and shorter legs? Or I am kind of even proportioned. I have, you know, basically just very even proportions uh, there's another video, I have another video I'm gonna link you to, that's all about understanding your body proportions and how to dress them and how to figure those out. So I'll link you to that down in the description box below and right up here. So be sure to check out that video, I'm not gonna go all over it. But once you know your proportions, then you can use the lines of your clothes to create the most pleasing proportions visually. The most pleasing proportions visually are a one-third and two-thirds proportion. So like, you know, one-third of your outfit is up here and the other two-thirds are down here, or vice versa, if you're wearing a dress or something, then two-thirds of your outfit may be up here and one-third may be down here. So I'll give you a little graphic over here, but you get it. So you're trying to create that one-third against a two-thirds to make up the whole three-thirds of your, of your visual outfit, of your outfit, okay? Not just necessarily your whole body unless you're wearing pants or a dress, long dress or something like that. But we're talking about your visually, your body. Some people call it your vertical shape even, your vertical shape, your changing your vertical shape by changing where those lines hit you in your outfit. Now, most of the time we think, we'll think, okay, well, I'm gonna wear some long pants, some pants from my waist down to my shoes, and that's gonna give me that two thirds, and then I put on a top and I've got one thirds and voila, there you go. Well, if only it were that easy, <laughs> but it's not because a lot of manufacturers, a lot of brands make their tops really long. So when your top is really long, then what happens to your pants? If you leave that top out, then your pants are gonna have to like be way, way long in order to create that bottom two thirds. So one of the things we do quite often is we do that little front tuck. And I've also heard people say, let's, let's clear this up, I've heard people say, when is that trend of that front tuck gonna go away? Well, I don't think the front tuck is a trend. If you think of it as a trend, then you probably are wishing it would go away. But I think of the front tuck as a tool or a style hack. You see, I don't front tuck to add interest to my outfits. I front tuck occasionally to change the lines. So if you are wearing ankle length pants, so that, that line down at the bottom is, is kind of high, right? It's high, it's showing your ankle. One of the things you have to do to then create that two thirds at your bottom 
half or your bottom proportion of your outfit is you need to raise that waistline a little bit. So when you wear a mid or a high rise jean or pant, you can give that top a little front tuck. And then what that does is it exposes your, the full length of your pant and it gives you those nice proportions. So that's why we use the front tuck. It's not really a trend as far as like something to add interest. It's not like, you know, I don't know, wearing leopard print. <laughs> it's like uh, a way to ch change your proportions. And I think the reason we do a front tuck instead of just an all the way around tuck is because some of us aren't comfortable with that all the way around tuck. And quite honestly too, tucking all the way can look a little prim and proper, a little like too done. And we're kind of in a time, I think, when we like to look a little undone, a little bit more thrown together. And that translates as a little bit more chic right now. So that's why the front tuck came into popularity and I'm still there for it as long as your top is too long. We're gonna need that front tuck to raise that line up, that horizontal line across your middle there when you raise it up. Just see what a difference it makes to this outfit because I'm wearing those ankle length jeans. I've given a little front tuck to the top. It raises everything up and it looks so much better. Now, there are other lines going on though here in this outfit and another line to consider is your neckline. So one of the things I've noticed is when the neckline is low, like for instance, on this uh, tank I'm wearing right now, my neckline is kind of low. If that, if then I also do a front tuck and I have a high waisted jean on, then it makes me look like I have like a little band-aid of a top, right? Because this line down here is low and then my waistline is, is high. So it makes my top look even smaller. And then my, my pants, my legs look really too long, like disproportionately long. And so sometimes we might think, oh, the goal is always to elongate the leg. Mm, not necessarily, especially not if you're 5'8", like I am, or I'd say even 5'7", 5'9", 5'10". We're not always trying to elongate our legs. We got long legs. <laughs> We're not necessarily trying to elongate them. So wearing that top, if I'm wearing my neckline is low and then my waistline is high, then that's going to make my legs look too long. So you need to think about your goals and then think about the different lines. So another thing we have to think about in the winter as far as those lines is turtlenecks. We wear a lot of turtlenecks, right? At least I do. I love a turtleneck or even a mock turtleneck. So it's a high neckline. Now, if I wear that turtleneck with that high neckline and I leave that turtleneck out, then I've got those jeans on, that's going to be almost like half of my body, that turtleneck is taken up. So I need to change those proportions. I like to wear a turtleneck, but to wear a turtleneck effectively and keep those proportions, I'm going to need to do that little front tuck or even I could tuck the top all the way around on a mid-rise or a high-rise jean or pant. Now, if you wear low-rise pants, that's a personal preference and they, you can certainly do that. But once again, you just need to work with those same lines. Keep that in mind uh, that you're working with those lines and you need to be able to, to do that skillfully. I don't wear any low rise pants. They don't work for, my, for me, really. I just don't think they work really well for my body. They don't feel good on me. But if you wear low rise pants, you certainly can do that. But then you really might want to wear lower necklines not a turtleneck. If you're wearing a turtleneck with a low rise jean, that's, you know, down, it's going to make your top look really long and your jeans or your pants look shorter. Now, what happens when you throw on a cardigan or a jacket or, you know, that third piece, a shirt like I'm wearing here, a flannel shirt is so, so soft wearing this flannel shirt over this, that adds another line. So that's just another line you've got to take into consideration. And that is why, here we go, that's why you need a t-shirt or a tank top or a turtleneck or whatever in the same color as that jacket so that you can put those together and it will help you create those better proportions. If you've got a white tank like I do now under a different colored shirt like I do now, but and then you're throwing in a third color down below, that means you've just got more lines to work with. You're going to have an easier time putting together outfits from your closet 
if you have that tank top or that t-shirt or that turtleneck or whatever, either in the color of your shirt or in the color of your jeans or your pants. It's just really going to help you when you're trying to work with those lines. The fewer lines you can work with in an outfit, the easier it's going to be. But we always have a neckline and at least a hemline, right, at the bottom of our pants. Another way to deal with those lines, of course, is to wear the same color of top, base top, and pants then you don't have a line there. Technically you do, I mean, you still got a top or you still got a, a waistband of your pants, either way, but you don't see it. Visually, you've kind of, you've gotten rid of that line. And so now you're just working with that outer piece gets to help you create those proportions. Now, we've got one more thing that we've got to consider when we're talking about those lines though, and that is our shoes. You've seen me switch shoes in and out here a little bit, and you've probably noticed that it actually does make a difference. Not just the style of shoes that I'm wearing, but the color of shoes. And this is another reason why it's important to have those essentials, which include shoes, <laughs> in the colors that are in your wardrobe. And it's another reason why I think it's a good idea to limit the colors in your wardrobe. I happen to have some gray booties. If gray was not one of my colors, then I would not have gray booties. I wouldn't need them. So maybe if brown is one of your colors for fall and winter this year, then you need to have you some brown booties, especially if you're gonna wear some brown pants or brown coated jeans or brown skirts, things like that. And you're gonna wear brown tights. You're gonna want some brown booties. If, you, if black is one of your colors, then you certainly wanna have black booties. So think about that. You wanna make sure that you have the shoes that will also work with your jeans. Now, what do you do with blue jeans? <laughs> you do not have to wear uh, blue shoes or navy shoes. Want there, once again, we're talking about intensity. So here you can see I've been wearing some gray jeans. I've been wearing gray jeans, two different pairs of gray jeans throughout here. And I do have some gray booties, but I want you to see that I also have some brown booties that are not the same color, obviously. They're not gray but they're in the same intensity level. So if I didn't have my gray booties, I would wear these brown booties with these gray jeans. And it, it's not exactly the same. It's not quite that uninterrupted line there from waistband to the bottom of my shoe, but it's awfully close because the, it kind of plays a trick on the mind, that intensity level and those booties in that same intensity absolutely work. So just think about though those lines. This really just gives you some food for thought. I'm not sure how well I have articulated this, but I wanted just to understand that one of the keys to creating better outfits from the clothes that are in your closet right now. You may need to buy a few more if you don't have those essentials in the colors that go, you know, that work together in some same colors and some colors that blend nicely together. So you may need to get a few essentials and add to your closet, but once you've done that, the keys to working with your closet to create great outfits are to know your contrast and intensity and duplicate that in your outfits and to pay attention to those lines, not just the hemline of your jeans or your pants, but also your waistband line and your neckline. Now, another thing you can do is you can wear, of course, a sweater. During the winter, we're gonna be wearing sweaters a lot. Maybe you're not going to wear a top and then something over it, you're gonna wear a sweater. That's why it's very important to watch the, the length, you know, the length of the sweaters that you choose. Ladies, tunics are just out and they're out because we've learned the importance of proportions and tunics do not help you create great proportions unless they're really long, unless they're like basically like a dress. Then you could wear them with some leggings and you'd have those two thirds to one third at the bottom proportions. But if you're trying to keep the two thirds of your visual appearance at the bottom, then you're going to want your sweaters to be shorter. So you see when you're, when you're shopping online a lot, you'll see cropped sweater or even shrunken sweater. Don't be you know, put off by those terms. Look at the links if they have them on there because they really might work for you. Here you can see I'm wearing two different cotton sweaters. One is from Quince and one is from Jenny Kane, but they both had that nice kind of a cropped link. They hang just over my the waistband of my jeans and my pants 
and these are like mid-rise, high-rise jeans and pants. So these sweaters work really nicely. That way I don't have to tuck them, but they help me to create the line where I want it to be. Now, one more tip when it comes to creating that line, those perfect lines with that sweater, is you've got to stand up straight and you got to wear a good bra. Now that sounds really elementary, but you know what? I have realized lately that I am so guilty of just schlumping. And I'll find myself in my kitchen, you know, doing something, and I am just standing like this. Like, can you even see me? <laughs> I just, I'm just really like shrunk down. And when I do that, you know, even out and about, which I probably do when we're out and about, if I do that, then that completely changes the lines of that sweater that I have intentionally chosen because it creates those nice proportions. But if I'm schlumping or if I'm wearing a bra that doesn't support me, then I've changed those lines and that I'm no longer getting those nice proportions. So wearing a sweater, you're gonna choose a sweater that is the right length for you, that, that hits you to whether you're, so that your pants still keep their nice long length, whether you're wearing cropped ankle length pants or you're wearing full length pants, either one. And then you also though want to stand up straight and wear a good bra so that those, uh, that line, uh, the integrity of it is kept. So I hope those tips have helped you today. That's a lot to think about. Maybe you have to rewind it and watch, <laughs> watch this over again. I don't know. Be sure to, you can even save this video, you know, to your account so that you can come back and watch it again. Uh, it, it took me, I've, I've really been researching this lately and I've watched a lot of things and read a lot of things on this to kind of grasp it. I grasp the concepts. I'm not sure I always get it right when I'm creating outfits, but it certainly gives me some food for thought and some uh, something to challenge me to create better outfits from my closet. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been a pleasure hanging with you and I hope you've enjoyed it too. And you'll give me a thumbs up on your way out if you've had a good time hanging here with me for a little while. I'll be back next Wednesday with another video and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye now. Thank you.